terrorists, feminists, suburbanites, royalty and a one-armed man go into battle for the award for Outstanding British Film. Made in Dagenham is a dramatisation of the 1968 strike by female machinists at a Ford assembly plant. The women stand up to their bosses, the unions and even their own husbands when they realise they don't have to accept being treated like second-class citizens. All those in favour of not only maintaining but increasing our current industrial action by going to an immediate all-out stoppage until we get the same rates of pay as the men. What? <laughs> well, why not? Because that's what this is really about, isn't it? We're on the lowest rate in the whole of the bleeding factory, despite the fact we've got considerable skill. Yeah. And there's only one possible reason for that. It's because we're women. Yeah. Another year is director Mike Lee's 11th feature film and stars many of his regular collaborators, including Ruth Sheen, Jim Broadbent, Peter White and Leslie Manville. The film is a portrait of 12 months in the life of married couple Tom and Jerry, who tend their allotment to come rain or shine, occasionally helped by their son Joe. So, when's it going to be your turn? A week on Wednesday. Oh, you didn't say. You didn't want to spoil the surprise. I knew. Oh no, I haven't bought a hat. Any news? Nobody? No, still quiet on that front. What? Though it tells the story of an American and is set in Utah's Canyonlands, 127 Hours is a distinctly British film, having been produced, written and directed by Brits, as well as having its post-production take place here. <laughs> TV provocateur Chris Morris makes his feature film directing debut with Four Lions, a comedy about wannabe Islamist terrorists living in Sheffield who are determined to become suicide bombers. Three years of stockpiling. How'd you get it all? A wholesale shop down the road. What, all from the same shop? Yeah. You mug, you'll get us nicked. No. I use different voices every time I go in. Different what? Different voices? Different voices. Show me. What? Show me the voices, come on. And one of them's... Well, it's my voice. Right. Can I have 12 bottles of bleach, please? Yeah, I know, I know what that sounds like. Give me another one. The King's Speech started life back in the 1980s, when screenwriter David Seidler, himself a former stammerer, found Lionel Logue's grandson and asked for help with the script. He then wrote to the Queen Mother for permission to proceed with the project. However, she declined, preferring not to have her husband's story told in her lifetime. That is St. Edward's chair. People have that carved their names on it. Chair is the seat on which every king is held and in queen place by a large rock. That is the stone of Schoon. You are, are trivialising oh, everything. You trivialise. I don't care you. how many royal Listen to me. Have sat Listen in to me. Chair. Listen to me. Listen to you by what right? By divine right, if you must. I am your king. No, you're not. You told me so yourself. You said you didn't want it. Why should I waste my time listening because to Because I have a right to be and I have a voice! Yes, you do.